Good evening, and welcome to Oscar and his friends. Tonight, a very important occasion for us. We have a lady who is one of the greats in modern music, and her history is very important, along with the history of jazz. Mary Lou Williams, with Bobby Durham on drums, and the talented Ray Brown on bass. We'd like to start off by doing a tune made famous by the Carpenters, believe it or not. Here is Sing. feel especially pleased tonight and honored because we have a lady with us whom I adore and admire and also more important than that she is a very very important integral part of jazz history would you welcome Mary Lou Williams
Thank you, Mary Lou. Beautiful. Oh, thank you for being here with you. <laughs> My pleasure. You know, of all the women that have been in music, I have to say this in all honesty, that amongst the players such as, my, such as myself and the arrangers and so forth, without a doubt, you are the lady that is most referred to as being the most prolific female player of all time. Oh, now, yeah. I don't want to start a whole thing <laughs> yeah. about that. However, I, it's a, I, your history is so interesting. I think, you know, it's worthwhile talking about a few points yeah. about it. First of all, in this day, in these days of the emancipation of women, mm -hmm. I think it's interesting to stop and think that you played with the Andy Kirk Orchestra mm -hmm. many, many years ago. Right. And what was it like to, for a woman just to be the pianist well, in a big band full of guys? Well, I'll tell you what happened with me, Oscar. Um, I, I have always been a pet or something around men. When I was 6, 12, 14 years old, I was with a man. When the cotton pickers came to Pittsburgh, they'd come out and pick me up. My mother would allow me to go out and play with them. And to be with Andy Kirk was well, just like one of them, you see. It, was, it wasn't a big deal because I've always been music, so musical until my music was first. There's a man that I really want to ask you about because, you know, during the Jazz of the Philharmonic days when I first joined them in 1950, I roomed with one of my idols. I consider mm -hmm. myself very fortunate, Lester Young. Oh. And Prez and I, you know, were roommates for, I guess, the better part of one or two tours. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, he used to refer to a saxophone player as revered, revered as Lester was. Mm -hmm. He always talked about a gentleman I know you know, Dick Wilson. Right. What was Dick Wilson like? Oh, you never heard him. You never heard him. Oh, he was sensational, especially on the jam session. I wouldn't think that he, uh, well, I wouldn't say that he was uh, as great as some other, well, yeah, in a way he was, but he didn't, he didn't have an awful lot of technique, but he could really make other people blow, and he blew. Um, a pianist that I think comes out of your, uh, what you, the legacy that you've left musically and are leaving, uh, Thelonious Monk. <laughs> I, I want to comment just say, it. Thelonious and Bud Powell used to be at my house. I guess you know about that, because Babs brought yeah, you there. Yeah, your house. All the musicians, <laughs> you see, everybody wondered how I could change and do things that, because I was there at, at the beginning of each era, you know, like the syncopators in the 30s. And the bop here, they wrote the music at my house, especially Bud and, and Thelonious Monk. They were there every day, and that was so funny. Bud was practically in love with Monk, and anything that Monk wrote, he loved it, and he could play it, you know. Well, it's a marvelous area. These are yeah. things that, that uh, many people are not aware of, and it's great to hear someone reminisce about great people, great players. Before I get into another facet of your talents, would you play another tune for us? Yes, yes yeah, I think uh, one of my favorites, something still like Willow Weep for me. Beautiful.
You know, I think there's one thing, at one point I should bring out that probably some people don't realize, and that is that you are conducting classes at Duke University yes, still, aren't you? Yes, very much. And you're teaching, teaching the history and the roots and so forth mm -hmm. and the, the growth of jazz, right? right? I want to talk about your writing. My what? Your writing. Well, I haven't been doing too much. Well, uh, you, well you, you never touch a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. Uh, again, another very unusual point about you as a performer, a player. As you know, there are many, many players, but usually when someone plays, it's very seldom you find them arranging or writing. You yeah. might find them composing, but you certainly don't find as many arrangers that play well. Um, you arranged for, for several orchestras, several of the big all the bands, bands, all the, the bands. Gus Arnheim, Benny Goodman, Benny Goodman, Benny Goodman, Duke Ellison, and the New York Symphony later on, and quite a few, uh, practically all the bands in the world. What made, you, what made you take that particular direction? That's well, so I didn't. Unusual. You want to know what happened? What, what, I had always had great ideas, you know, as a, as a, I'd search, you know, and bring out new sounds. Andy Kirk used to come to the house when I was about 17 or 18 and uh, take down ideas. Mm -hmm. Well, it bored me because he was there from 11 until 12 at night, and I couldn't even <laughs> eat or do anything, taking down an arrangement, you know, writing it out right. from it. So what happened when he came back to the house one day? And I had written arrangement. <laughs> and, and the only thing wrong with, I don't think the uh, tenor and uh, trumpet was, the trombone was making it, you know. Uh, so he showed me how to do it. And from that day on, I began writing myself. Do you find writing as fulfilling as playing? No, because I compose a lot while I play. <laughs> well, that's... And that's my greatest composition. If I play and do something, you know, and get the section, if it's with the section, just nod my head and tell them when to stop and when to go and stuff like, it's fun. Yeah. Well, this is, you know, whenever, that's the only answer I usually give when people say, what is jazz? I say it's instant composition. Right. And that's what it is to me. Before we go to uh, one of our messages, would you play another tune for us? Another one? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay. See what you can.
We're so pleased to have had the very talented Mary Lou Williams as our guest tonight. Thank you, Mary Lou. We we'll hope to see all of you the next time when Ray is in the house with us and Bobby Durham joins us on drums. Good night. Take care of yourself. It's a tough world out there, but facing it together makes it just a little easier. Bo Bridges and Helen Shaver star in the grown-up comedy series about love and marriage, United States. <laughs>